Hey friends, welcome back. I am Dr. Pavitra and today as promised, I am starting the discussion on question papers. So this is a DNB 2019 question paper, paper 4 I am starting from and this is the first question. And the question was on neonatal thrombocytopenia. And on the left you can see my references. I have taken references, um, I have taken these books because these will be available with the, all of the postgraduates and you can cross refer to them in case you have any doubts. And if I have told something wrong or if I have made a mistake or if I come to know through somebody, I will definitely update it in the description box. So please check that out. And I am sorry if I am making any mistakes and apologizing in advance because this is going to be a single take and I literally have just 10 to 15 minutes left. Alright? Okay. So I will try to keep this as short and sweet as possible. So if a question on neonatal thrombocytopenia is asked, so you will be starting with a definition or an introduction. Correct? This will hold true for any question, not just this. So what is the definition? Anything less than 1.5 lakh platelet is called as neonatal thrombocytopenia. This corresponds to the 5th percentile in adults. Okay. Um, this is uh, again this is just for theory. Practically if you go in depth depending upon the gestational age the 5th percentile will uh, come down as the gestational age reduces. But for theory this is more than enough less than 1.5 lakh. How are you going to Classify thrombocytopenia. So there are multiple ways in which you can classify depending upon the mode of getting it, whether it is congenital or acquired. Or the other way that you can do is depending upon the time of onset. Time of onset will be early, less than 72 hours, or late, more than 72 hours. That is when this child starts having a thrombocytopenia and uh, after that another method in which you can do is based upon the severity of thrombocytopenia severity is uh, 1 to 1 1.5 lakh you call as mild I think I'm running out of ink yeah um, 50k to 1 lakh you call as moderate and less than 50,000 you call as severe thrombocytopenia or depending upon who was the cause for this thrombocytopenia? Whether it is maternal, whether it is placenta, or whether it is the neonate itself. That it, Based upon that you can classify. So there are multiple ways in which you can classify. Okay, But for us to know what the causes of thrombocytopenia are, I think this will be easier. So let's see the causes. So causes we will start from mother. So mother suppose she has a pregnancy induced hypertension or a complication of it preeclampsia. This can present with thrombocytopenia. Okay, any intrauterine hypoxia will have thrombocytopenia and they usually present early. Preeclampsia help syndrome which you already know. They present with not just thrombocytopenia but also neutropenia. Okay, this is a point by which you can differentiate. Then any intrauterine infections, okay, your touch can cause thrombocytopenia. Don't put Zika in this, Zika does not come here. And any immune thrombocytopenia. See, baby per se is not going to mount an immune response to the platelets, correct? Only the mother is going to do. As far as immune thrombocytopenia is concerned, uh, it can be two types, autoimmune or alloimmune. Auto is antibodies produced by the mother for both mother and fetus. Alloimmune is only against fetus. Why? Because the fetus has an extra antigen from father. Always mother fights with father. Correct. So this extra antigen develops an antibody by the mother and it crosses the placenta to affect the fetus alone. Mother is not going to get affected because she does not have that antigen. Understood. Okay. So what are the types of autoimmune thrombocytopenia? Suppose the mother has uh, immune mediated thrombocytopenic purpura or she has a SLE that develops antibodies or she takes some drugs. 
like uh, say for example uh, quinidine so that can cause a uh, drug induced thrombocytopenia that will you know produce antibodies cross and affect the child so these are some examples of autoimmune here both mother and fetus will have low platelet counts alloimmune example classical example is neonatal alloimmune thrombocytopenia which is what i explained antibodies against the paternal antigen on platelets here only fetus will have low platelets mother will be normal mother's platelet count will be normal so these are the causes from mother next coming to placenta so will the placenta be causing something it is usually very rare okay so it is rare and if at all some chorioangioma or vascular thrombus if present can cause thrombocytopenia okay then what about neonate see neonate usually is innocent most of the times because usually it is uh, acquired cause okay remember any late onset thrombocytopenia is sepsis unless proven otherwise any early onset thrombocytopenia in a term baby think of neonatal alloimmune thrombocytopenia okay so these are uh, just some extra points to remember for you all right uh, so neonate wise see it can be i'm running out of ink on all my pens what is this so in neonates it can be a genetic cause or a acquired cause okay acquired is very easy for us see any sick baby like this child has had asphyxia this child will have thrombocytopenia if this child is having whatever x y z making the child sick will usually have a thrombocytopenia in fact thrombocytopenia is the most common hematological abnormality that you can find okay any cause of sepsis any again torch infection it's not exactly acquired but you know it's not genetic we'll just put it as non genetic cause rather than acquired that will be easier okay torch infections suppose this child develops thrombosis somewhere this thrombus is definitely going to consume some amount of platelets okay especially think of renal vein thrombosis if the child, if you are not able to find a cause for thrombocytopenia in the child any dic again as the name suggests it's a consumption coagulopathy all right so see so if you look at all this you can say that some of them are causing decreased production of platelets and some of them are causing increased um, you know consumption these can cause decre decreased production and increased destruction also because sepsis can cause you know dic and this can come in both so thrombosis dic um, where 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 else sepsis nec we can add yeah so these are all the causes of non genetic neonatal cause of thrombocytopenia what about genetic see genetic again you can divide into two see if the child is obviously syndromic or you are not able to find any you know facial anomalies etc then look at forearms and hands syndromes if you do not know or if you cannot remember any syndromes put it as downs trisomy 18 trisomy 13 uh, nunans turners jacobsons these are all causes okay i think these three you can easily remember right all right so if you are looking at forearm what are the things you are going to look for you will look at thumb hmm? if thumb is abnormal then think of fanconis fanconis usually presents in the childhood not here all right but neonatal cases have been reported so remember it as a cause if thumb is normal if thumb is normal see if radius is present or not if radius is absent then it is tar syndrome t a r which is thrombocytopenia plus absent radius right next radius is present try to rotate the forearm if you rotate and you are unable to then you can think of atrus atrus is absent thrombocytopenia plus 
radio ulnar synostosis it's fused together you can you know definitely diagnose it through a radiological confirmation so these are some of the causes of thrombocytopenia so now that you know these are the causes you will evaluate the child what are the clinical features that you will looking you will be looking out for see a usual causes of usual presentations of thrombocytopenia will apply here also what you are worried about most is uh, intracranial hemorrhage correct so remember that and especially intraparenchymal hemorrhage is associated with neonatal alloimmune thrombocytopenia so you need to watch out for that otherwise your usual petechiae ecchymosis all of this you can tell and you will try to talk about clinical features in this way if you do this for both your practicals and your theory it will be easy clinical feature is one for you to identify cause correct so from the list of causes if you can find the clinical features for each of them say as you said asphyxia if there is a history of baby you know uh, being being limp and not crying and not taking a breath then that is asphyxia sepsis is poor feeding lethargy etc torch infections you might have a history in the mother you might have some findings in the child so you can put all of that in your clinical features these are things that you need not you know mug up or uh, remember by heart if you know the causes you will know the clinical features so for clinical features you need to identify the cause so you will look for clinical feature of all the causes that you have listed next you will try to find clinical features of thrombocytopenia okay clinical features of thrombocytopenia is your petechiae your ecchymosis etc one point that i would like to stress is upper half of body if the baby is having multiple petechiae that is still okay because even normal newborns due to the you know increased venous pressure in the upper half can have petechial rashes so upper half petechiae can be normal oh come on now this cannot be happening to me again so that can still be normal uh, right next what were we talking about then you will want to watch out for complications correct complications is your intracranial hemorrhage correct internal organ bleeding so this is how you will classify your clinical features and you will write so i am not going to talk again about each and every clinical feature one extra point that i would like to tell is one of the causes for increased consumption will be your casabac merit phenomena i always forget the spelling of this hmm. all right casabac merit phenomenon in hemangio huge hemangio endotheliomas they can consume platelets increased platelet addition will be present because of the uh, you know increased exposure of endothelium and increased convolution of the hemangio endothelioma so those are added and those are aggregated okay this results in decreased platelets in your peripheral counts this can also cause consumption coagulopathy okay this casabac merit phenomenon can be a repeated viva question or a oski question your hemangio endothelioma will increase in size once it starts having this merit phenomenon it becomes increasingly you know purple red increase in size angry and all that so that is how you identify this is going for casabac merit phenomenon so clinical features is done so investigations again as i said you need not remember all your investigations if you know the causes then your investigations become easy isn't it so so suppose you have a syndromic baby you are going to do chromosomal analysis suppose you are having a child who is having uh, um, uh, you know uh, you are suspecting a genetic cause like tar syndrome then you are going to do a x ray forearm correct so if you are suspecting a sepsis or a nec and all that you will be doing your basic set of labs of you know abg electrolytes cbc etc okay one point about cbc that i would like to mention is depending upon the platelet size again you can you know have an idea about what sort of thrombocytopenia it is but that i think is a discussion for you know uh, this detailed discussion on a, a how to tell a powerpoint okay but remember cbc small normal large platelets 
the causes of congenital thrombocytopenia can be identified okay so these are some of the examples of investigations that you can give and what about treatment treatment depends upon how sick the child is what gestational age the child is what platelet count is the child having depending upon these three things your treatment will vary so if the child is having less than 25 k platelets and the child is however you transfuse okay the child can be sick the child can be well okay including a child with neonatal alloyment thrombocytopenia i think this should be discussed separately because the pathophysiology the management everything varies but just remember less than 25k transfuse irrespective of whatever it is less than 50k or 25 to 50k to put it in a better way any child with bleeding any baby with evidence of coagulopathy any baby before a surgery or invasive procedure any child with neonatal alloyment thrombocytopenia with previous sibling having a intracranial hemorrhage then you transfuse more than more than 50k or uh, yeah more than 50k 50 to 1 lakh only if there is a major bleeding or a significant bleeding like in a intraventricular hemorrhage or if child is going to undergo a major surgery then you transfuse some points about transfusion if they ask a question just on platelet transfusion we'll cover that also okay you know the indications for platelet transfusions so plat platelet transfusions never ever do it through a micropore filter because if you do a micropore filter all the platelets will get caught in the filter itself and nothing goes to the child all right so don't do that next ideally try to cross match especially in a rh negative female baby you understand right so even if there is a small amount of rbc contamination among the multitude of platelets this rbc can cause sensitization in this rh negative baby and future future of this baby we are talking about not the present hmm? so ideally rh and abo sensitization should be cross matched what is the dose how much are you going to give see 5 ml per kg is usual dose how much will this 5 ml per kg raise it will raise to 20 to 60000 per cubic millimeter and up to 10 to 20 ml per kg can be given in severe cases severe cases of thrombocytopenia okay what is the rate of transfusion rate of transfusion is 10 to 20 ml per kg per hour you can check the platelets i think even after 2 to 4 hours post transfusion that will give you a good idea so that is all about neonatal thrombocytopenia i hope this was helpful and i hope i have not taken too much of your time thank you guys for your patient listening if you have anything more to add please let me know i will add it up in the description box below um, i sincerely hope that you will be able to answer a question if this is repeated again or if a variation of this is asked thank you bye bye